What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to incorporate a shake action in your app. So here's the app we're going to put together. I know there's a lot going on here, super creative. We can go ahead and actually use a keyboard shortcut to simulate a shake here. And you saw when I hit that, uh, in this example, we're going to be showing this controller, but we'll also talk about, you know, how to show other stuff and maybe an alert and all the various possibilities that you have at your disposal. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give this project a name of Shake Gesture. You want to make sure your lifecycle is UI Kit and your interface is Storyboard, no Swift UI today. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop and I'm going to replace a folder with the same name right there. And as soon as Xcode decides to load up, let's go ahead and close this right panel. We'll expand our Xcode window and I'll jump into my view controller to get started. So basically the premise of detecting a shake gesture uh, has three steps and let's actually comment them here so we can do them one by one. So first the view controller uh, needs to be the first responder to respond to the shake event. I'll talk a little bit about why and what that means. The second thing that we need is we need the VC uh, needs to be able to become uh, the first responder, first responder. And basically that is, uh, you know, hand in hand with number one. And then finally, we want to detect the actual shake uh, event. And you can actually detect when the shake has began as well as when it has ended. So let's go ahead and do these one by one at the bottom of view to load. I'm just going to set a background color here just for the sake of uh, when we run this in our simulator. We'll take a look at uh, our actual UI. We'll know when it loads up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say become first responder. And we want to do step two here as well, which is we want to override can become first responder and return true. Now let me talk about first responders for a brief moment. So this concept of a responder, you might have seen it already in UI text fields or UI text views, but basically it's uh, who it's the object that is first in line to respond to a given event. So if you think about on your computer when you have five windows open, there's always one that is frontmost. It's actually the thing that is the first responder when you're dealing with Mac OS. It's the thing that is actually focused. And similarly in iOS, you know you have a bunch of uh, objects that can, that can respond to a given event, which is known as the responder chain and the first object in that line in that hierarchical chain that can respond uh, needs to be the view controller that is going to be able to respond to the shake and by default I believe a view controller is uh, not capable of becoming the first responder which is why we go ahead and override this and we say hey this view controller can become the first responder so now that we've got that done, that's step one and step two, which is pretty quick, we want to do step three here. And uh, that is detect when a shake has began or that's not what we want. Shake. Let's see. Uh, motion began is what I'm looking for, actually. And we want to detect when a motion has ended. So both of these methods are pretty self-explanatory. You can detect when a shake motion has began as well as when it has ended. Most often you're going to want to use the ended here, but I figured I'd show you guys both. Now we're not quite done yet. We also want to make sure that this inbound action parameter, let's see, let's try that again. We want to make sure that the action uh, is of type or the motion rather. That's not what we want. Make sure the motion is a uh, motion shake action. And if we actually take a second to read what it just said this was here, uh, this event is related to the user shaking the device. So basically what we're looking for. And once the user has shook their device, they can, you know, you can basically do whatever you want. So let's do a quick example and show a alert. So I'm just going to say, uh, detected a shake. We're going to say user got mad and shook their phone. 
And of course, this is going to be of type alert. Now we want to go ahead and present this alert with a animation. We also want to add a action to this alert so we can dismiss it here. We'll say title is dismiss, style is cancel, and of course the handler will be nil. And once we've got all that, we can go ahead and pick a simulator here. I'll go with the 12 Pro Max and give it a run and we'll take a look at how you can actually, you know, debug shake actions on a simulator, uh, aka kind of simulate them so you're not, you know, shaking your computer like a crazy person. So here is our application. Now, how do you actually simulate a shake? You go to device in the toolbar and you click on shake and uh, boom, there is our alert. Now, there is a shortcut for this also that works sometimes. I don't know why it's not reliable, but it is uh, uh, command Z here. I believe that's the control key, Com uh, control command Z. Let's try that actually. Uh, control command Z. Oh, it actually does work, look at that. Sometimes it doesn't work, but but there, that's how you basically uh, do a uh, shake action. So the other thing I wanna talk about is what are good use cases for this? So personally, I'll use this to show like a user a settings view controller or maybe for them to undo an action. So if you ever see people uh, you know, with apps that have custom undo actions when you shake the device, this is basically how they are achieving that. So let's take a look at an example of showing a view controller. Let's say you wanna show like a feedback controller once the user shakes their device. So what you would do in this case is, you know, you could just create a view controller. Of course, you would use your own view controller and I'm just gonna set a, you know, background color for the sake of having something. And then we can go ahead and present this guy. We'll say present animated will be true. Go ahead and hit command R to build and run. Let's try if this works, control command Z. And uh, boom, we have our orange controller popping up. Now, you wanna make sure that you, you know, be reasonable about what you tie to a shake gesture. If someone's walking and using their uh, your app or you know they drop your phone, this is gonna probably get triggered. So there's no really way, uh, well, there's no really easy way to detect how much a device was shook. There are ways where you can drill down and make it granular. Maybe I'll do a video on that actually. But just be mindful that this is not a very discoverable gesture. It is certainly useful in some cases. But, uh, but yeah, just keep that in mind when you're figuring out if you want to use this and what feature you want to tie it to. And the last thing I'll mention here is that this is supported in both Swift UI and UI Kit. Of course, I just showed UI Kit here today. And you can leverage both the motion ended here as well as motion began if you wanted to, you know, maybe uh, do something up here before motion has ended. You can use these two lifecycle events, these overrides, to do multiple things uh, in order. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short and sweet video. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do today and I had this uh, this ask in one of my comments. So I figured I might as well do a video on it. If you're into iOS and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely do that so we can continue to grow the channel together. Like the video if you found it useful and uh, helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any video suggestions or feedback or just want to say hi or, you know, just want to see something in particular, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I read every single comment. I try to reply to the majority of comments. So, uh, yeah, definitely drop a comment down below if you want to, want to share something. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.